Thank you, Kunat Nicha, and thank you, Shruti. Um, I think it is uh, very important to ask provocative and even dangerous questions. Uh, it's important so that uh, we can be sure that we have good answers. And I'm a strong believer in stakeholder capitalism, but I would argue that there can be no other form of successful capitalism. Uh, having spent the last 21 years uh, working very hard to maximize the shareholder value of AWR Lloyd's clients in Asia, I have to say that I see the question which forms the title of this particular event as verging on subversive. And I want to thank um, those brave members of our panel today in volunteering to discuss it. Kun Pakawipa, Kun Pum, Harsha, thank you so much for your excellent uh, exchange today, insightful comments and discussion. The reason I think the question is dangerous is because it implies, in my view, a lack of understanding about how free market economies work. And if misunderstood, it can easily become a slippery slope to bigger government uh, and the inefficiencies, economic stagnation and corruption, which inevitably uh, follow. Uh, I don't know if you can see on the screen here a uh, slide of uh, Milton Friedman. Uh, Shruti, are you able to see it? Is it up? Yes. Yeah, so, so Friedman bashing has become a very popular sport, particularly over the past decade or so. Some of it, I think, has been fair, but some of it perhaps unfair. Uh, Friedman was building on the ideas of Adam Smith in the 18th century, and Friedman himself admitted the need for government to set the rules of the game in a free market economy, uh, but also to ensure ways of forcing players in the economy uh, to pay for externalities, in particular uh, in relation to pollution. And uh, to, to borrow the words of, of Winston Churchill, and as uh, most of you can probably tell I'm British, uh, it is a great concern to me uh, that some seem to regard private enterprise as a predatory tiger, which needs to be shot. And while others look on it perhaps as a cow that they need to milk, but perhaps only a handful see it for what it really is. Uh, which is the strong and willing horse that pulls the whole economic cart along. So I think we need to uh, not forget this. In a free society, a company is established by private shareholders as a voluntary and enterprising decision. Shareholders are the owners of a company. Uh, of all a company's shareholders, uh, sorry, of all of a company's stakeholders, shareholders take the greatest financial risk. If things go wrong, and they often do in business, shareholders can lose all of the capital that they have invested. They put their capital at risk on the understanding that they also have the potential for the greatest financial returns if things go well. But in a free and competitive economy, shareholders do not have any primacy as such in the sense of giving them any special coerc coercive powers over other stakeholders. For a business uh, to be successful and to generate returns for shareholders, the owners of a business must develop a mutually rewarding relationship with a diverse mix of stakeholders, all of whom engage voluntarily with them and their representatives. Shareholders do not have any special rights to force other stakeholders to do things that they don't want to do. Shareholders need the willing cooperation of stakeholders to achieve their objectives and vice versa. And as I think a number of the, uh, or all the, the panelists today have pointed out, a successful economy is really an ecosystem of free exchange, interdependence and symbiotic cooperation. 
If a stakeholder simply doesn't like a company's methods, style, or products, then they have the freedom to terminate their association with the company. And I think that what has been happening in recent decades, importantly, is that people across the world have been waking up to their rights and to their powers as stakeholders. They've been refusing to buy products uh, that they regard as unethical, and they've been refusing to work for companies uh, who they regard as, as being unethical. In many cases, uh, they've gone further in publicly shaming uh, unethical practices and bu business models which they see as being physically damaging to the physical environment. And they have every right to do so. Uh, in a free society with free freedom of speech and freedom of expression. If shareholders do not take these concerns into account, then clearly their businesses will fail. What has be become known as ESG, uh, I think is a way for shareholders and the management teams which represent them to establish systems for actively addressing the concerns and priorities of all such stakeholders to ensure win-win relationships. And developing best practice ESG systems and strategies for companies in Asia has become a core part of what AWR Lloyd has been doing uh, in recent years, including nature-based solutions, energy transition, and corporate venture capital strategies. So I would like uh, on that note to uh, thank Kon Wanweda, Kon Natnicha, Kon Pon Kanok, Kon Premtip, Kon Anya Pon, Kon Urairat, and the rest of the team at the TMA for choosing AWR Lloyd as their knowledge partner for this year's series of events around the theme of ESG. We have published uh, an ESG survey of TMA members, so I, saw, I hope all of the people listening in. Uh, to this webinar have got a copy of that. And we've hosted six webinars on risk and crisis management, climate change and net zero, green finance, innovation for sustainability, beyond ESG. And today, what I regard as a trick question about uh, shareholder primacy. We've had some great uh, speakers and panelists from SCG, Bangchak, PTT, CP Group, Thai Union, Kong Thai AXA, Indorama, Asset World, the Climate Bonds Initiative, SDGX, Mei Fa Luang, as well as from AWR Lloyd's uh, strategic partners, FHI 360 and Wright Partners. So a big thank you to all participants for their time and for their insightful contributions. We have one uh, more webinar coming up early next year, which will be entitled Back to School uh, ESG Leadership. And so until then, uh, and Cup and wishing uh, all of you great success and happiness in the 43 and a half days which remain of uh, 2021. Thank you very much, Cup.